wonderful evening, uh, which um, could be our last uh, finance meeting for the term. So um, I'm going to I'm going to start it off and I, I'm, I'm sure there's a few um, uh, comments and we'll wait to the end of the meeting, perhaps from uh, from, from, from some smoke folks on the committee. So with that, 1.1, approval of minutes, March 31, please. Do I have a mover? Councillor Sullivan, seconded by Councillor Norton. All those in favor? And those Aye. opposed? Thanks, Donna. Carried. 1.2, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this off myself if I can, please, uh, uh, team. Um, What we've got here is Finance Committee a term and review. What I was looking to do is uh, I, I understand that uh, one the other committee has done something similar. Um, I'm looking to you know to get some comments and so on from you. I'm looking to to see what you know our accomplishments, what you think our accomplishments, our accomplishments, what you're most proud of. Um, are there uh, changes to the committee structure that you'd recommend to the new council or or, or finance committee coming in? And uh, what do you think the next finance uh, committee should tackle during their, their first uh, first uh, bit of, of their new term? So I, I wanted to throw that out just for uh, some conversation. So can I, will someone start me off? What do you think uh, our accomplishments are? Uh, Councillor Sullivan, please. Uh, I guess broadly, um, we have certainly taken a finance committee and, and supercharged it. I mean, I sat on the finance committee 208 until 12, and it was basically an audit committee. And I mean, I'm always kind of surprised. Oh, yeah, we do audit too when it comes around, because when you look at the St. John website and the long term financial plan and the suite of policies that have come along in the last four years, I mean, it, there's not really one policy that I can pull out and say that's the thing. The long-term financial plan, for sure, um, but all of our policies that we've brought forward are incredibly important um, moving forward for, for the city. I mean, the wage escalation policy that helps to have workers invested in the success of the city. Um, our debt management policy you know, people have talked about, you know, how in debt the city of St. John is, and then we correct them and say it's 20% lower than it was when we started. Um, you know, I still hear people talking about, uh, you know, the city's deficit. No, we don't have one anymore. You know, um, we've always balanced our budget, but we've done it, uh, you know, by having some long, extra long-term debt. And, I mean, we now have policies that make sure we are in lockstep with what good sound financial advice does. Um, but while all those pieces are important, I think the whole is that much more important. That finance committee is a hugely important piece of the city of St. John. And, and as we'll see later in the agenda, when we talk about scorecards and reviewing of policies and seeing what, are we on track for goals or stretch goals and, and do changes need to be made? Really, the work of the finance committee moving forward um, has just increased. You know, not only are we going to be looking at developing new policies, policies, but now we need to monitor everything that's been done um, this term. So, I'm incredibly proud of what the finance uh, committee has accomplished, but more importantly, what council has accomplished um, with regards to the city's finances. Um, my my. My hope um, to steal, Edward, Edward Silbert. My hope to steal a uh, line from the mayor is, you know, that we pass the baton on to the next crew and and it just keeps going. Um, and you know, really, uh, we've been focused. Uh, we've been focused on our job, and uh, you know, really, at the end of the day, that's your job, Mr. Chair, to keep us focused. And uh, thank you for that. I'll end there. Thank you, Councillor Solomon. I see uh, uh, Councillor Reardon, I see your hand. I still don't see your face, my friend, but please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, for me, I have found this to be a very powerful and rewarding committee to be on. 
just to see the progression of it over all of the years that we've it's been established. I've been on it since its establishment, and it's been great. Um, just getting us in line with best practice policies and uh, practices, et cetera, going forward, having the long-term financial goals in place, having a monitoring system for those long-term financial goals, having our scorecard that's coming, we're going to talk about a bit tonight. It's all been, it's all been very, very rewarding. Uh, my only um, comment would be, I think when we got on in 2016, we talked about maybe switching do two years of finance and then switch to two years of growth. I would, I think there's continuity and there needs to be continuity with the crew. So I would recommend, and I liked being on this committee for the four years. Um, I feel in a lot of ways, like I just, we turned the staff loose in some ways and they just went right after the things that this city needed at the time. So I, you know, I have to say, to Kevin Fudge and his team that they've been excellent leaders for us along the way as well. So, uh, but I, I would recommend going forward, if we're going to have this to keep the same setup, five counselors on it for the whole four years. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Councilor Norton. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chairman Merrithew for the opportunity. Um, Kevin, uh, you know, you've been, uh, uh, between the mayor's office, the city manager, uh, council, uh, you CFO, you've been uh, in your team. I know uh, going back, you think of folks like Hillary, um, all kinds of wonderful people that have uh, brought, uh, you know, brought together the vision to get us to 2030, that long term financial plan um, and the steps that it will take to get there. Um, probably for me, what's one of the big things is more than more than ever i think the public uh understands exactly what the targets are going forward um they understand the opportunities and the challenges uh, much more than they did um maybe not so much what um some of the assumptions and the stretch goals that we've articulated in that plan are but they they do understand um and we understand some of the key financial policies i always i know they're written as policies but i always kind of refer to them as um, six pillars, and they're always worth repeating that don't spend more money than you make, borrow wisely, save your money for a rainy day, take good care of your property, take control of your expenses before they take control of you, and replace a roof before you buy new living room furniture. That plain speak has helped guide um, the policies and the decision making um, of the uh, of the of the financial policies that have, have got us to this position. Some of those I know I've left people out the risk of, of uh, mentioning folks, but um, from the communication piece to the infographics to the developing and the drafting of those policies and then living by those golden rules of good finance. Um, we're uh, we're looking to brighter brighter days, and I think 2030 is going to be, um, you know, it's not that far off. And by sticking to this, I think uh, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good day. So thank you, Councillor Norton. Well said, brother. Thank you, uh, Mayor Darling. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we did this exercise in growth the other day, and I found myself getting a bit emotional, to be honest, about it because it's, uh, you know, it's um, I am incredibly proud, and it's not without scars, to be straight. Uh, not only with my committee members, but uh, but uh, but also, with, you know, with the public. Um, you know, for me, uh, one of the I think greatest strengths that I have personally is I'm a very passionate individual, and one of the greatest weaknesses I have is that I'm a very passionate individual. You know, and uh, yeah, you know, to me, everything that we've done here has been to strengthen strategy and objectives and metrics and take action and stay focused, you know, to be open, to be transparent. And, you know, when you go after some of your colleagues, it's going to sound a bit repetitive. But, you know, one of my greatest fears is that that, you know, we have some folks that want to veer us back off course or they want to stop this progress that we've made, that they want to go back to status quo. And that's uh, that can't happen. So for me, I think that, um, first of all, I won't try to name everybody, but you don't do any of this without the staff and, uh, you know, uh, the commissioner of finance and all of his team, but the whole senior team, our city manager, the whole senior team that are here, uh, growth, finances, operations, all these pieces are interwoven and tied together. I think, um, I think Gary, you or Greg, sorry, you just said, 
I think we've been really honest about our challenges and we're trying to turn them into opportunities. I think St. John, St. Johners, Johners today better understand, you know, uh, you see it on, on online where people are saying, no, 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 that's not true. It's I'm having to do it less. And St. Johners are standing up and saying, you know, what you're trying to say there isn't true because I read the infographic. I've read her finances. You can't spend money you can't have. You shouldn't buy furniture before you fix your roof. All that, you know, stuff you you talked about. I think we've, uh, you know, we've embedded fiscal health from day one in our priorities. Uh, we, we've thought long term. We've tremendously improved our long-term thinking, the long-term financial plan, the policies, continuous improvement, the opportunities with Ernst & Young. As you said, Gary, we paid debt down by 20%, capital from operating. We now have reserves, rainy day funds. We have a tax rate reduction in place. We've built confidence in this community that we've got, we are heading in the right direction, in this region that we are heading in the right direction, in this province a premier that's probably one of the toughest in the entire country that's written us letters saying, you have done great work. You have turned this ship around. It's pointed in the right direction. I would argue with those suite of policies, the work that this committee has done, sorry, the direction, the what that this committee has set, the work that Kevin and his team and the senior leadership team have done that in many ways were one of the best run municipalities in Atlantic Canada. Um, I, you know, I do have some some things that I think we can do better. I think it's one of your other questions, Mr. Chairman, but uh, 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 proud is not enough. You know, proud is not enough. And to you, David, for your leadership, uh, you know, you you say it how you see it. You're focused, you're, you're hard when you need to be. And uh, for a CFO and a chairman of a finance committee, that's exactly what we need. You've done a, just a phenomenal job, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Oh, thanks, Mayor Don. I appreciate that. Look, I'll just, uh, I think at the end of this uh, meeting, I'd like to say some thank yous, but I'll, I'll just, I'll just end this portion of the, uh, of the um, uh, open session um, uh, like this. I want to thank the committee, first of all. I've got some like-minded, level-headed people um, that worked with some very bright staff, all right, uh, to put some financial structure in place for this city that we've never had before. And so, uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't be prouder of all of us. And, uh, and, and and the mantle has to be passed and has to be uh, and it has to be continued. So, with that, um, let's just do receive and file, please. And moved by Councillor Sullivan, seconded by Councillor Reardon. All those in favor? Aye. And and again, thank you very much, folks. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, One point three. Asset Management Policy uh, Amendment. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Mr. McGovern for this. Commissioner McGovern, you out there? Good evening, uh, Chairman. Good evening, Brent. Good evening, Chairman Merrithew and members of uh, Finance Committee. Uh, since the inception of the uh, Asset Management Program and the Asset Management Policy and the Asset Management Strategy, uh, because of our infrastructure deficit <clears throat> that was identified as part of the uh, State of the Infrastructure Report, we've been primarily using risk and life cycle costs to prioritize our capital investments. But now, thanks to the various policies that were uh, just discussed here by Finance Committee and adopted by this Finance Committee and the infrastructure investments that have been made in recent years, very good progress has been made in um, addressing the infrastructure deficit, which you'll hear this evening. For that reason, and because our asset management program is maturing, it is time to review and update the asset management policy and allow for consideration of infrastructure investments to improve public's quality of life and opportunities as well to decommission assets. We're also looking to establish criteria to prioritize capital investments, and this will involve an, an engagement process, which will be touched upon by our presenters this evening. Also, now that Council has adopted our climate uh, change ad adaptation plan, we also need to establish procedures to evaluate climate change risks. 
And with that, I'll turn it over to our manager of climate change and asset management, Mr. Samir Yamin. We'll start off the presentation by covering a few slides and then turn it over to uh, our guest, um, Mr. Mike Benson, uh, our asset management expert advisor from RV Anderson, who will uh, cover off the remainder of the presentation. With that, over to you, Mr. Yamin. Thanks. Well, thanks, Brent. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and all the finance committee for this uh, presentation. Yes, I want to try to take control of the presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so thanks again. So <coughs> the objective uh, of this presentation is we want to pro provide the finance committee the reason and the objective why we are doing the changes to our asset management policy as well to our asset management strategy. And then I would like to give you some kind of quick overview of what we have accomplished so far as part of our asset management program and what are the outcome and benefit. Then I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Mike Benson from RV Anderson to go into detail to, 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 to explain to us the approach and the methodology we have used in order to, to derive this recommendation, what are the next step, and also to, to determine what are the anticipated benefit and outcome if we implement these recommendations that we are asking the Finance Committee to approve. So mainly as Mr. Brent McGovern has indicated is, is prior, prior <clears throat> in the past, we have been concentrating a lot of our uh, capital investment on our existing infrastructure. And we are using mostly risk-based and sometimes life cycle to prioritize where we're going to invest this infrastructure or this capital investment. And the reason we did it uh, basically is because we have a significant infrastructure deficit and we need to ensure that our infrastructure renewal in, is in good shape in order to, for us to continue providing the level of service which is acceptable to the community. So what, what we are proposing right now is one thing we have not, not done in the past is we never took consideration if how, how we're going to imp implement capital investment on our, our, our new asset in order to improve the public quality of life. So this asset measurement policy as, as well as the strategy is we're looking to address and to make sure consideration will take into con consideration will take the infrastructure investment to improve the public wealth as well as finding opportunity to decommission asset. Additionally to this here, uh, the strategy did not indicate uh, how we're going to prioritize our capital investment. So what we're looking here is to update our asset management strategy to identify in detail the criteria we need to implement in order to prioritize our capital investment to understand where the funds going to go and what are the criteria we need in order for us to invest our infrastructure. And lastly, one thing we need to ensure that whether we are putting a new infrastructure or a new asset or existing asset, we need to take into consideration or we need to ensure there is a procedure in place to make sure that climate change and life cycle cost is taken to, in consideration to make sure that any new asset or existing asset we have here is is we mitigate any climate risk or any risk and also to ensure that we pre we, we provide the level of service at the lowest life cycle cost so this is our the main purpose while we are updating our asset management strategy just to give you a quick overview of our asset management program the city of St. John proudly we have made a significant change in our asset management program and how to manage effectively our infrastructure. The city of St. John took a multi-phase approach to, dip, to implement a comprehensive asset management program. In phase one, what we did, we established the foundation for us to guide us to implement this program by implementing an asset management policy, indicating what are the principles we need to follow in order to manage our infrastructure. And this policy is a high level document which adopted by council. The second one is our strategy, which is to tell us what are the strategy we need to do in order to implement this principle. And lastly, 
we talk about roadmap, which identifies the activities, the tasks we need to do in order to implement all the strategy and the principle we needed into our asset management program. Phase one is a continuous improvement, but we 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 are we completed phase one. In phase two, this is where we start doing the implementation. We know we need to understand the state of infrastructure. In order to understand the state of infrastructure, we need to make sure we have it, our asset registry inventory is up to date. We have a good data accuracy. We want to make sure that our information is mapped into GIS. We have 95% of our infrastructure already mapped into GIS, and we develop a risk and condition rating system to help us use this system or these procedures to start prioritizing our asset, our investment. So phase two, we have completed, and then we move to phase three to make sure uh, we have the process and the, uh, the workflow process to make sure to help us define or develop our capital program. This is, is already in progress. And also a part of this three, we need to understand the impact on our infrastructure, whether on, at the corporate level or as a community level, what the impact of climate hazard to our infrastructure and what type of mitigation strategy we need to do on, on the various asset group, whether it is road, whether it is stormwater, whether it is building, or whether it is underground infrastructure, piping and so on. So phase three is under progress. And lastly is phase four, which is the implementation of an asset management system. This would help us, would help the step to understand what is the funding required and to make sure that data are readily available for the step to manage infrastructure and to make a proactive decision on, our infra on their infrastructure. So we did all this, that's excellent. So what are the outcome or the benefit as a result of implementation, all this asset management activity and policy and so on. So we're not there yet, but we see we, we start using our asset management program to, to develop our capital program and to start providing the finance department with the reliable financial forecast. So we start moving into this direction and we start seeing a, a concrete evidence of this asset management work is working pretty good. Then the second one, we have increased asset management capacity building and knowledge among the staff. We have many staff within the city now, they have their certification in asset management planning, so they understand the best practice and the best and procedure to help and manage their infrastructure. Thirdly, because of this asset management program and the reliable information and the prioritize here, we are be able to secure a lot of external infrastructure funding from various uh, from various government, FCM and so on. So that was a success for us. And also we start seeing a good collaboration among various departments on, on to manage their infrastructure and to develop their capital and so on. We're not there, but we start seeing this uh, significant improvement there. And also we start to understand the need of our infrastructure. We have developed three state current state of our instruction in 2016, 2018 and 2019, which give us what is our infrastructure deficit and what are the financial requirements on the short term and long term to able to maintain the level of level of service acceptable to the community. We start having this information, which is excellent. We will we will be able to now to use some of the preventive maintenance and the practice to help reduce our operating and maintenance costs. And the result of this, we start developing policy strategy to address some of this facing the infrastructure, whether on the climate change and whether on best best management practices. And lastly, which we see a big uh, reduction in our infrastructure deficit by over $46 million on the general fund. So the benefit uh, for us to implement an asset management program has been significant and we are happy to continue moving in this direction. So now I would like, before I go further now with the analysis and the approach we use to, to, to derive this recommendation, we, we are, which we are asking you to uh, endorse this one, I would like to hand it over to Mike Benson from RV Anderson to go through this recommendation. And in the end, uh, we're gonna close with the recommendation and we ask you to endorse it. And then we'll have, after that, we'll have some question. So, Mike, if you can take control of the presentation, it would be a good idea. Absolutely, Samir. I think I have Thank control you. now. 
So good evening, everyone, and, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. As Samir mentioned, my name is Mike Benson. I'm an asset management engineer with RV Anderson. Been working with Samir in the city now since the asset management program's inception in 2016-2017. Now, before I go into the details of the recommendations, I just wanted to take a step back and provide some context and some background for everybody as to the asset management program and how things are framed. So back in 2016, as Samir mentioned, we established what we call the document hierarchy or asset management document hierarchy. And what this really does is it establishes how the asset management program is governed in the city. And so at the very top, we see we have the municipal plan that is the overarching document or planning document which inspires, or from that, we had the asset management policy. And with the policy, really, it's, it's council's commitment to pursuing evidence-based decision-making and, and best practice asset management. Uh, what it also does is it directs senior management, senior leadership to go ahead and implement an asset management program. And it establishes what we call the key principles of the program. And these are kind of the, the foundation for how the city is going to manage its assets moving forward. From that, we have the strategy, as Samir mentioned, and this is really its senior management's commitment to asset management. It's senior management saying, yes, we've heard you counsel. We will implement an asset management program. We will implement it according to your key principles that you've identified. And we'll provide further direction to staff on how to move forward. And that's the asset management program. And, and as Samir mentioned, there's been enormous success in the city in advancing the asset management program. And we've seen some, some really key deliverables that have come out, uh, the asset management plan in 2018 and the state of infrastructure report in 2016, 2018, 2019. So a lot of the recommendations or the purpose, as Samir mentioned, one of the main purposes of this meeting, we're talking about you know, the ability to consider quality of life infrastructure, looking for opportunities to decommission assets, maybe that, that we aren't warranted anymore. Uh, really what it comes down to is we're talking about decision-making. We're talking about evidence-based decision-making, informed decision-making is really what we're talking about. And in the asset management program and in the policy, there's really three key principles that we talk about we talk about an effective decision, and that is levels of service, risk, and life cycle cost. <clears throat> so level of service we're all familiar with, but the goal really is to achieve a financially sustainable level of service that is acceptable to the community. When we talk about risk, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to mitigate risks, mitigate vulnerabilities on our infrastructure, whether that's inherent risk just from owning the asset or risks, new risks that are being uh, introduced when we talk about extreme weather events and climate change. And then, of course, you know, we want to be efficient. We want to be effective for how we may maintain our infrastructure and, 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 and really maintaining it at the lowest life cycle cost. So in, in a perfect world, the goal is, you know, we're trying to pursue an asset management strategy or an asset management plan, which mitigates risks, minimize life cycle costs, and allows the organization to achieve a financially sustainable level of service that is also acceptable to the community. Now, with these three criteria, we often find they're very interlinked. So when we, when we think about level of service and we think about increasing our level of service, what we often find is that has an impact on risk and life cycle costs. So as we increase the services, either through new services that we hadn't previously provided or improving existing services, we would actually, what we typically see is we would see our risk profile come down, but as you would expect, we see costs increase, more services, more costs, but things, there's less risks being imposed. And of course, the inverse is true. If we think about reducing levels of service, we would likely see, in most cases, there are exceptions to the rule, but in most cases, we would see an increase in risk, but we would also see a decrease in cost, less services, less cost. And when we make decisions, it's all about a balance between these three. And we're, we're looking at decisions through these three lenses and trying to provide evidence and information to counsel to make an informed decision. And these are kind of the three main criteria that we look at when we talk about decisions. 
Now, as Samir and, and Mr. Or Mr. Yumin and Mr. McGovern alluded to, the city primarily until now has been using risk and life cycle costs justifiably. And for you know, two main reasons. One, there have been uh, challenges which needed to be addressed. But second, in order to develop and establish a level of service, there's a lot of effort and, 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 and engagement that is required. You know, staff cannot just come to the table with what an acceptable level of service is. There needs to be good dialogue between staff and council, as well as the public, to really understand what is the desired level of service for the community. And what are the cost trade-offs for increasing or decreasing that level of service? And so I'm very pleased with the progress to date in the city. And, and as Samir mentioned, there was a lot of groundwork that was needed to get the quality of the data, to get the quality of the information to a point where we can start really taking a look at level of service and, and defining what is the level of service that we provide and where as do we as a community, where do we want to go? So that kind of set the stage for these recommendations. And, and really that's what these recommendations the goal of those recommendations are is, is, is to empower staff, empower council to, to start focusing on those three criteria, moving beyond risk, beyond life cycle cost, and taking a good look at, life, or at levels of service. So we have, I think, six recommendations in total. What you'll notice, there's actually very few recommendations, only one recommendation for the policy. And that's because your policy does enable this. The key principles in the policy do state that level of service, risk, and life cycle costs should be considered. So it's more at the strategy level. That's really where some, um, some clarity, I would say, is required to provide further direction to staff on how to implement that vision. <clears throat> so of these recommendations, two I would consider are housekeeping items. That would be the first one, a, a small tweak to the policy combining risk and climate change and then a renaming of a section within the asset management strategy. Just small housekeeping items, no material changes. One of the recommendations that we have for the strategy is to add and to, to, to further expand on this, what we call a decision-making approach. So how are we going to make decisions with respect to our infrastructure? You know, the policy provides at the vision level, at the strategic level, you know, level of service, risk, life cycle cost, now we need to, 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 to go into that into more detail. What do we mean when we say level of service? How do we go about determining a desired level of service? What does that process look like? Same thing with, with risk. What are the risks that we're looking at? You know, things like inherent risks, deterioration risks, climate risks are all important things to be mindful of. And then life cycle costs, again, providing uh, further direction there. And so in this section, it's really laying the foundation for staff as to what are some of the strategies that we need to put in place to start making effective and informed decisions. You know, the, the ultimate goal here is to provide counsel with the information that they need to make an informed decision. <clears throat> so in addition to level of service, risk, life cycle costs, you know, we do acknowledge there are other considerations that we need to be aware of, regulatory, legislative, health and safety, infrastructure deficit, debt management, growth and economic development. And there are other policies and plans that are out there that we need to be mindful of. And that actually leads me to the second recommendation, a supporting references section. <laughs> you know, when we go to prioritize our infrastructure and decide what's, what comes first, we need to be mindful or we need to be aware of that there are other planning documents which council has approved and so what this section really does is it pulls it all together into one central location you know what we often find for growing municipalities is there's a lot of really good planning documents recreation master plans transportation master plans water wastewater uh, neighborhood plans you name it and and oftentimes they can become there's a lot of different planning documents that we need to be aware of. And so this really just brings everything together and, and, and directs staff to use those documents as it puts together its capital plan. So those are the two recommendations for the strategy. The other two recommendations are more specific to staff. And the first one relates directly to level of service. So when we go about defining our level of service, we really need to understand what are the, the strategies or the activities that we need to do to our assets? And what are the costs? That's the most important thing. So think about our roads here. 
you know, we could have all of our roads in the city to be in fantastic condition. What, is, what are the different strategies? What are the investment requirements to achieve that? Or maybe we are, we, we are willing to accept a lower level of service. Some roads can be in poor, some in fair, some in good. That would have a different strategy and a different uh, life cycle cost associated with it. And so it's really defining what those strategies are. And more importantly, what are the costs to achieve that level of service? And then the last one is specific to the capital budget is really defining in detail, what does the process look like? What are the procedures? What are the different criteria? You know, the decision-making approach in the asset management strategy will lay the foundation, you know, level of service, risk, life cycle cost. Now staff need to take that and, and, and develop something that is more robust. They need to start looking at engagement with council, engagement with the public to determine what is an acceptable level of service and then move forward there. So looking at things like roles, responsibilities, and authorities in the capital budgeting process, what's the approach, what are the criteria, maybe there's weighting factors, communication channels become very important, information requirements, you know, as for finance and for senior leadership, they need certain information to come to them in order to put forward to council on, on these different decisions. Even looking at things like business case templates or project templates that come from the departments to finance and to council and, and really engaging with stakeholders, both internally and externally, to ensure that there's buy in for that process. So what are the anticipated outcomes? What we're really trying to do with these recommendations is improve staff's ability to, when I talked about at the beginning, developing those plans which mitigate risk minimize life cycle cost and achieve this financially sustainable level of service. Other, some, of, some of the other outcomes would be, you know, developing those evidence-based plans and providing reliable financial forecasts, ensuring that we have line of sight and awareness for all the other planning documents and policies that we've adopted, ensuring that we can establish these level of service targets and, and I think most importantly, communicate the impact of increasing or decreasing levels of service. What are the cost trade-offs that come with that? It also allows us to consider and justify investments in quality of life infrastructure. So again, back to the beginning, we talk about quality of life. That ultimately is a level of service decision. What is the level of service that we wanna provide? And what infrastructure is needed to provide that? That's part of the decision making. We also want to recognize the costs and benefits of decommissioning assets. So again, we look at these decisions through those three lenses. We may justify a decommissioning of asset because it just is not helping us achieve our desired level of service. It may be posing a significant risk to the community, or maybe it's just too expensive to maintain. You think about that old car, you know, it's like every two months you have to take it back into the shop to get repaired. Maybe there is a, a case to be made to decommission that asset just based on a cost perspective. And then lastly, to, to help them establish clearly defined criteria and procedures to prioritize their investments. So I'll leave it there and I believe we'll open it up to questions, Mr. Yumin. Yeah, yes, thank you. Maybe uh, Mike, can you, yeah, good. We have the recommendation here for council I'm sorry, for the finance committee to approve here. Uh, I know we are in the initial phase here and I wish I can go further with this to have the criteria already ready, but uh, we're working very hard to ensure that this recommendation are implemented uh, thoroughly in detail here to make sure we have a robust system and to help us to move forward uh, with any capital investment on our infrastructure. So. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it up to question right now. Anything else would be able to help? Sorry, Brent. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, just maybe one other item, uh, you know, as as we uh, as this document's presented, of course, we're mindful of the uh, strategic plan that's also being developed at this time and how that will actually um, integrate. This will integrate with the strategic plan and uh and and be an important link to uh serve on moving forward uh the strategic plan and so we'll be mindful of that as we develop the criteria and unfold the next phase here that's uh recommended so with that uh turn it over to uh 
Uh, Chairman Merrithew, thank you. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to move that, Mr. Chairman, at least to get it on the table. Absolutely, uh, Mayor Darling. Uh, it's moved and may have a seconder before we go to questions. Second. And thank I'll you, uh, Councilor Reardon. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councilor Reardon. Um, Mr. Yuen, Mr. Benson, thank you very much, gents. Great presentation. I wanted to just slide deck down so I could see some hands and so on. We do have the recommendations. Um, it has been moved and it's in our kit, so you could take it down for a second. Look, we've, you know, this is why I'm so proud of this finance committee over the last um, four or five years, I guess, is that, you know, we, we've never been this far down these rabbit holes to know what our infrastructure is, what it needs. Now we're moving more to quality of life. This is, this is, this is a great presentation. Um, questions, concerns, I see Mayor Darling first, please. Uh, thank you. Um, thanks, Mr. Yamin. As always, uh, you, you, you come with uh, such thoughtful um, uh, strategies and recommendations, but, but also tremendous passion. You take very complex issues and you, uh, you help us break that down. Uh, Mr. Benson, really enjoyed your presentation. You know, of, of course, we've been working with RV Anderson now for the last uh, four or five years. And I was really, um, really impressed with, uh, not that you need me to be impressed, but very impressed with your presentation as well, because I think you're, you and Mr. Yamin and Mr. McGovern and other staff are helping us try to wrap our hands around and our heads around really complex issues. Is it the road? Is it the park? Is it the, you know, before maybe it wasn't the park as much, but was it the road or the pipe or, or in, and certainly in the last year, you know, this council has been focused on the, it, throughout its term on growth and our finances, which is the subject tonight and on provincial reforms. And as Mr. McGovern just mentioned with the, the strategic planning exercise, we, we, we did many engagements with consultants, experts around uh, the country to, to help us wrap our heads around what are the thriving, growing communities doing? What are they investing in? And they're bigger than us, some of them. They have more financial capacity than us. But I think what, you know, and I really speaks to the DNA, uh, and sorry, Mr. Chairman, I guess it's a bit of a speech perhaps. It speaks to the DNA of this committee that on uh, April the 28th, we're still driving we're still driving hard here on issues that are incredibly important to this community. So, you know, for me, I, I'm really impressed with the, the discussion. I'm thrilled to, to, to see in an asset management plan, this quality of life piece starting to come uh, to the table. Uh, I can't think of a, you know, I think of something like Dominion Park, uh, that, that is one of those projects that's been waiting around for years and years. We see a, a community group that just put together a just absolutely, uh, I think, stellar vision for that park. Uh, and I hope that um, because at the end of the day, and I'm, I'm almost done, Mr. Chairman, at the end of the day, for me, it's figuring out that formula through our strategic planning exercise on how we're going to grow this community, uh, because I think that's that's critical is to what what is it going to take to have a growing, thriving, sustainable community where citizens who are the shareholders thrive economically, socially, and culturally. That's what I was writing down when I was listening to the presentation. And I hope that the next phase, Mr. Yaman, Mr. Benson, and others, what are those guiding principles? What's the definition of success, our objectives, our metrics, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's very complex. All of these strategies have to weave together. And, you know, I think we've just seen in this presentation tonight a uh, step and a move forward to uh, to really challenge yourself. The next council is going to be challenged tremendously to be really thought even more thoughtful and forward thinking and and ha likely going to have to make some tough decisions because that that measure of sustainability, I don't think we've always uh, done as good a job as uh, as perhaps we have in the last four or five years of really challenging. Uh, what does sustainability mean and how important is growth and, and so on and so forth. So anyway, sorry, I thought I might have had a question, Mr. Chairman, but I'm just pretty excited by uh, the direction we're going in. Thank you. We understand. Councillor Reardon, you've got something, please? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I want to also thank Mr. Yamin and Mr. Benson for the all the work that's been involved in getting this uh, plan out together for us. What it really does is it takes the subjectiveness out of the decision-making process. It gives us the facts and then we can go forward with them. We can defend our decisions far better uh, as we go ahead. 
Um, the other thing it does is it makes it clear, I guess, to everyone what actually assets are. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever thought of the road as an asset and they don't think of like, I'll get a call and people will say, what am I getting for my tax dollars? You know, my road is not in great shape, but there are other roads connecting to their roads. So that whole infrastructure of roads. So I guess it's understanding what your assets are and understanding the cost of all your assets. And that's, we've never really been clear with that and for the citizens as well. So this should help with some of that clarification. So it's a great step and uh, really looking forward to, uh, really looking forward to all this unrolling. Thanks so much. Welcome. Uh, I don't see any other hands. Um, look again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll thank uh, staff. A, a tremendous report. It'd be exciting that, you know, we've, we've, we've done a ton of infrastructure. It mentions in the, in, in the report, $46 million. We've done a ton of infrastructure with some uh, wonderful partners, the feds and provincial government, okay, to help, to, you know, to maximize the, uh, the taxpayers' dollars. And now we can start to look at that infrastructure, perhaps that quality of life infrastructure. That's what this report says to me. Now we can start to look, perhaps, at Dominion Park thing. Okay, they'll bring, they'll bring precise, level-headed arguments to this next committee uh, that will look at some of that. That's exciting stuff, all right. Because although you can tell the taxpayer that we have replaced pipe down a certain road, it's not that pretty. All right, it's necessary. The infrastructure is, we just replaced someone that was over a hundred, uh, um, gosh, I'm trying to do my math now, Don, 140, 60 years old, 160 years old, uh, yet it's not pretty. So it's it's uh, wonderful to hear that, that that we can start to, to take direction from staff and look at quality of life um, uh, projects. So. Uh, with that, uh, there is a motion on the floor. Um, can I call for the vote, please? All those in favor? Aye. And opposed? Thank you so much, people. Next item. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Commissioner Fudge for this long term financial plan health scorecard. Uh, Kevin, please. Thank you, Chairman Matthew. Um, this may be the last finance committee item I'm going to introduce. So I'm just going to take first and foremost, take the opportunity uh, on behalf of staff. I want to extend my very sincere appreciation to the finance committee. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with all of you on this committee over your term, and I'm very proud of the accomplishments uh, we've been able to make. And over your term, I would describe uh, what this committee has done is approve a complete overhaul of the city of St. John's financial governance not only creating a strategic financial plan, but embedding the plan and policy uh, that will guide staff, will guide council in a fiscally responsible manner into the future. It also involved public input through the budget simulator, and we're, we're pr very proud of that. And it includes key performance indicators and long-term targets. In other words, we have defined what success looks like when it comes to fis fiscal responsibility. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, essentially, you have established and formalized a roadmap for a roadmap for financial sustainability supported by a robust performance management system. It's like any plan. If you don't set goals, if you don't measure your performance, and if you don't track results, it's very difficult to improve or be successful in what we're trying to achieve. And before you this evening is a presentation that provides the committee the long term financial plan and the financial health scorecard. It paints a picture of discipline of sustainability and of improvement. It provides a vision and it demonstrates measures and it shows demonstrated results. We are also introducing a new element this evening to monitor the financial plan, extending measurement beyond simply tracking key, tracking key performance indicators, but also moving forward with a detailed scorecard. So with that, I'm very pleased to turn the presentation over to our senior finance manager, Don Arbor, who will walk the committee through the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I'm just going to share my screen. Everybody see that? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the members of the Finance Committee, good evening. In December of 2019, the city launched the first ever long-term financial plan. As we faced the end of the provincial short-term financial assistance, we set out to eliminate the $10 million structural deficit, which was accomplished in 2020. Now that we are well into the plan, it's time to take a look and see how well we are doing. 
Just to refresh everyone's memory, the plan had two cases, a base case and a stretch case. These scenarios relied on five key elements, borrowing capital investment, growth, expense management, and reserves. In the base case model, growth is estimated to be one and a half percent per year. Pay as you go uh, increases to increases by 1 million every year and the tax rate remains stable at a dollar 785. The stretch case allowed us to look at the art of the possible. What would the city's finances look like if we achieved 3% growth per year by a combination of St. John energy dividends, regional cost sharing, municipal and binding arbitration reform? Under this scenario, we saw our tax rate steadily decrease to $1.57 in 2028. Looking at our 2021 budget compared to the key performance indicators as set out in the plan, we are right on track when it comes to our debt measures. We are also on track with pay as you go contributions, tax rates and infrastructure deficit reduction. Of note here, a revaluation of asset condition was performed in 2019, which resulted in a recalculation of the structural, the infrastructure deficit. We are working diligently at reducing it. However, better data has allowed us to assess it at an even better level than expected. We did fall a little short with the assessment growth due to a combination of factors, uh, mostly COVID-19 assessment category reductions, we did not meet our one and a half percent target. We do not expect, however, the same result in 2022. Finally, our people costs as a percentage of total revenue is well in line with the target. However, due to COVID closures, we did not meet the unconditional grant as a percentage of total revenue target. When it comes to our reserves, we are doing a very good job saving our money for a rainy day. The capital and operating reserves have a combined total of over $14 million. This is a very different picture than the $2 million reserve we had in 2016. This finance committee has accomplished a great deal since its inception. The financial picture I've shown you here tonight is a much better story than the one that was told five years ago. However, like any other plan, updates are required on an ongoing basis in order to consider new information and the experience that we have uh, acquired. If you uh, take a look at handouts A and B in your kit, uh, pr they provide an updated plan that takes into account two main factors. The first uh, is the tax rate reduction to $1.77 that was approved this year by the Finance Committee. The second is the rate of new capital under the general fund goes from 90%, sorry, the infrastructure deficit reduction goes from 90% to 85%. This allows for greater flexibility when it comes to capital investment. With the update of the plan, we have developed a new financial health scorecard for 2022. This new scorecard will assign a numerical score to our financial health. As with any plan or strategy, establishing the plan is just the beginning. The execution of the plan is what makes a difference. As they say in the continuous improvement world, what gets measured gets done. The new scorecard has three levels. The base level is if a score of 100 is achieved. That means that last year's performance has been met. Anything above 100 signifies an improvement over last year. The plan level is achieved at a score of 150. This means that results have attained what was planned. A score above 150 is the excellence level. This means that the plan has been met and significant improvement in the performance has been achieved. Uh, this slide just depicts the three various levels of performance. Uh, so this is the scorecard for 2022. Uh, you will also find a copy in your kit. Um, it lays out each measure as well as the points available for each of those measures. So uh, staff recommends a receive and file on the 2021 budget health scorecard. 
amend the capital budget policy for 2022 to reflect the change in the capital renewal ratio in the general fund to 85% deficit uh, reduction in 15% new capital and to adopt the new financial health scorecard for 2022. And with that, I would be happy to take uh, any questions. Thanks, Ms. Arbor. Um, you take down the slide deck for me, please. So there's a recommendation there, folks. Um, um, uh, on the, uh, I wonder if someone would put it on the table for me first. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sullivan. And do I have a seconder for it, please? Mayor Darling, thank you kindly. And looking for some questions or concerns, please. I've got uh, the mayor first. Yeah, so I don't need to go first, Mr. Chairman, but I'll just jump in. Um, uh, no questions or concerns. I mean, I just I really want to thank you, Don, for the the summary. I just again, it's uh, feels like a love in here tonight. Um, but I, but I, uh, you know, first of all, thank you for the summary. It's excellent. I think it it really shows that we're on track. We're in the first year or two of the of the plan. There's been some headwinds. COVID. Who would have known, right? I mean, we we certainly didn't plan for COVID in our plans. But what I'm interested in is seeing the organization continue to challenge itself, pivot, move, challenge targets. Uh, because ultimately, at the end of the day, what I didn't say in the previous presentation is what must we do and what would be nice to do. I, you know, if you believe David Campbell, we need to grow by 2,000 people a year in this region for the next 20 years straight. So I think it's going to be a constant challenge of ourselves as, as policy setters and the organization to say, are we going fast enough? Do we have enough urgency? Are we being tough enough? Is that target good enough? Should we go faster, stronger? That's sort of one set of comments. The other one, uh, which I said the same thing in growth, this is such a complex organization. We're, we've done really good work. Uh, the staff do really good work. Uh, um, we have some challenges, but but we're we're heading in the right direction, and it's communicating this. Uh, we really have to. I mean, I don't I don't, don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but there's three people watching the live feed tonight. We have to take this really good news, break it down. The one pagers are excellent. We have done it in the past, but really challenge ourselves consistently to communicate and engage with the public because the strong, the more the public understands that we're heading in the right direction, the more bought in and, 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 you know, the policy setters, there's a bunch of people running for council right now, running around promising to undo a bunch of this. So, so we just need to continue to communicate with the public what and why, and you know, how, how we're going to do it and why it matters. And it's just a bit of a challenge, I guess, to you, Commissioner and Don, the team, uh, because we all know finance people are the coolest people around. But but we just we just need to get that message out to the public in a way that they can consume it, and they're not going to read 300 pages. So thank you for the summary. It's it's what it's what yeah, I think you said it, Don. And uh, when you set a target and you act on it and you stay focused on it, and you measure your progress, you get results. And I think this this team uh, has done a great job. So thank you very much for, for that. Councilman Norton, please. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, absolutely, it's nothing but positive feedback. I, uh, it's a commentary a bit on the committee form of governance that we have too, that we get to take an opportunity here and, and do that plan, do, check, act. That is, um, that's that's critical. Uh, more now in the last couple of years, um, since policies have had a a, a chance to um, shape the organization, we've been able to get into that performance cycle where we're doing the planning, doing checking and act, and and so checking the temperature here in our performance is it's awesome. I, like as a as a, as a citizen. I, I'm just pleased that we're doing that and we're checking our performance and how well and how well we're doing it and and overall that we're on track for that 2030 target that we set out in the long term financial goal. I mean, it's pretty um, it's it's pretty awesome. It, uh, it, it legit puts a smile on my face. So um, thank you. Thank you, Don. Thanks to the team. So 
Um, and I look forward to this happening happening more regularly. And it, it just gives it this this committee is able to drill down a little bit more because we have more 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 time to do that before it goes to council. So um, you know, with these types of forecasts that are updated on a yearly basis, I think we just get better as an organization. And um, and uh, and it, it does exactly like our uh, exactly like our chief magistrate just said. Um, you know, we're uh, we're high performing, and it's these sorts of things that that allow us to do that. So thank you, Councillor Sullivan, please. I, I'm a teacher. I love a good report card. Um, you know, so much of our financial plan is based on common sense. I really like that we've taken um, financial lingo and turned it into we're saving for a rainy day. You got to fix the roof before you buy the big screen TV. You know, um, I'm going to throw a few more. One was in the presentation. Uh, you manage what you measure. We have to do that. And the other one that I guess, and it alludes to both the creation of the growth and the finance committees um, but more specifically, you know, getting into the home report and where we're doing well and where we're not. Uh, if you focus on everything, you focus on nothing. So having these scorecards and report cards really helps us to say we're doing well here. Good. Where do we allocate our resources? Where are we not doing well? Um, certainly assessment uh, is, uh, I would say, if I look at this report card and going forward and where we are in the short term uh, assessment is where we need to do some more work and so moving forward you know we should be talking about what we need to do to move that bar i know we've had conversations uh, to learn with the uh, with the uh, service new brunswick to help there i know we've got all sorts of cranes in the sky right now how do we take that and, and convert it into assessment and make sure that happens um, so we've got some focus I think we need to do there. And I guess my last comment, and I, and I really like that you measure and then you react. Um, and I would love to see as, as we continue to push, we the city continue to push with our focus on finance. Um, I would love to see a year or two down the road as we continue to follow and work on our financial policies that stretch goals become goals that you know my hope is we work it hard so that stretch the stretch goals become goals and then we have new stretch goals uh, we still have some work to do but the basis of it all is focusing on the parts of the plan um, with based on the feedback that we're getting from the report cards uh, I love it it's it's just one more step and the mayor said it earlier we're still driving and uh, I hope the next uh, group that sitting at this finance table has the same drive and I'm confident they will because behind the scenes we'll have the same staff driving us. Thanks. Mayor Darling, we'll go back to you. Yeah, just to just to follow up, um, I just was reflecting here for a moment. L last week I was having a conversation at home, 10 o'clock at night, someone messaged me, can I, can you call me? So I called and uh, I was the, the individual had an issue and it had nothing to do with the municipality and we were chatting through it. I was trying to provide some help and the individual said, I don't care what level of government it is. I need help. And and I just was sitting here reflecting on this, you know, great news and heading in the right direction. I really and I'm saying it to you, Don, but I'm really saying it to the commissioner. Uh, and, and I know Miss Hamilton's on the line and Envision St. John. When I think about the broader, bigger scorecard from the strategic plan, I think it has to be economic, social, and cultural metrics that end up uh, measuring sustainability, quality of life. And under that umbrella, and we know we have to have, we have a level, we have responsibilities and other levels of government have responsibilities, but it truly is about outcomes. I'd like to see this same vigor on our finances in those other areas. Uh, and a true community scorecard because not naming the person who called me last week, but it really, I, I said, thank you because they, they just said, I don't care, Don, I want help. And so, so somehow this is an awesome night, awesome celebration, scorecards heading in the right direction. But what is that overall 
um, uh, set of metrics that we need to put in place that measure a thriving community. And I know, Don, you and Kevin in the room with Jacqueline and others in the room with a broader community, other levels of government, because at the end of the day, we certainly know we have a premier right now that cares about outcomes as well. And I don't believe we thrive. We can be thriving financially, but might not thrive overall if we don't work on those other issues. So, I, you know, I said something very similar at growth the other day as well. So I just, I just, um, super great news. We we have to take that same vigor and apply it in those couple of other areas as well. And I think, you know, folks like yourself, Don, the way you think and Kevin, and, you know, you can, you can add a lot of very uh, pragmatic uh, sort of approach to getting better or aren't we? And I'd love to. Love to see that move forward as well. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. I don't see any others. Um, again, uh, Ms. Arbor, great report. Um, you know, we haven't had a lot of, we've had some commentary here. We haven't had a lot of questions. You people just simplify it so well. You tell your story so well. Personally, I it gave me little chills and flashbacks of report cards. And I, would, uh, I um, no, look, and we have to tell the story to everyone, as uh, as uh, I think Councillor Sullivan and, and and Mayor Darling try to, uh, to try to say. Um, so anyway, good report. Uh, I do have a recommendation on the floor. Um, I'm gonna, is, did I did we put that on the floor? Can someone help me? We did. Thank you, Gary. Apologize. Thank you kindly. Um, so I'll call for the vote then, please. All those in favor. Aye. And opposed. Unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you again, staff. Uh, final item. We've got uh, utility general fund. We're going to go to Commissioner McGovern for that again, I think. Brent, are you out there? There you are. Yes. Good evening once again, Chairman Merrithew, members of Finance Committee. This evening we wish to deliver a brief high-level overview of why we're before you this evening with uh, revision two of the 2021 utility and general fund capital programs. While there's uh, a lot of detail in the report, including updates on our COVID-19 uh, COVID resilience infrastructure fund uh, status, as well as the community uh, development fund status. The bottom line is that uh, the work we're doing here is to ensure the city realizes and leverages all of the funding available. Uh, under both of these funds, the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Fund, as well as the Community Development Fund. And uh, as you'll hear, it, it uh, results in no in cost increase to the city share of either the general fund or the utility fund capital budget, but it allows the city to get additional funding from these programs from the other levels of government. With that, I'll turn it over to our Director of Engineering and Chief City Engineer, Mike Baker, who will uh, walk us through a very brief presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. Can everybody see my screen? Uh, no, Mike, we can't see your slide deck yet, my friend. Oh, there we go. It's up now. Thank you. Excellent. Good evening. The following presentation is on revision two of the 2021 Utility and General Fund Capital Programs. The original 2020 and 2021 um, General Fund and Utility Fund Capital Programs were approved by Council in August 2019. The first set of revisions to the 2021 Capital Program occurred in February of 2021. We are before you today to present the revision number two to the 2021 Utility and General Fund Capital Programs. The main reason for these revisions to the capital programs is the reallocation of funding associated with the city's um, revised COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Funding Program submissions and the Community Development Funding Program uh, submissions. In January of 2021, working with um, New Brunswick's um, Regional Development Corporation, it was identified that there was approximately $1.27 million of funding available to the city um, through the COVID-19 Resilience in, um, Infrastructure Funding Program. The funding is comprised of 80% federal share and 20% city share. It was also determined that there was funding available to the city 
um, through the community development um, funding program, which was comprised of 50% um, provincial share and 50% city share. In order to leverage all the city share dollars within the capital program, projects were proposed to RDC for approval for both programs. The majority of projects discussed with RDC for the funding programs were from previously approved city capital programs. The only exception that I will talk about later on is uh, roofs for the utility budget. All funding submissions have been submitted for the COVID-19 resilience infrastructure funding program and the majority of the submissions are in the process of being drafted for the community development funding program. To date, the city has received approval from RDC for three out of six of the COVID-19 resilience infrastructure funding programs. Projects. With revision number two to the 2021 water and sewerage utility fund capital program, the overall envelope has increased by just over $522,000 with the increase being funded by other share. The city share of the utility program remains unchanged. The increase can be attributed to using a large to adding a large roof replacement project to the utility capital program, which will see eight roofs replaced at various St. John water facilities. With revision number two to the 2021 general fund capital program, the overall envelope was increased by just over uh, $349,000 with the increase being funded by the other share by other share. The city share of the general fund uh, program remains unchanged. The increase can be attributed to attempting to obtain funding for five 2021 general fund capital projects through the COVID-19 resilience infrastructure funding program. By obtaining this funding, the city would see just over um, 115,000 in savings as many of the projects were planned to be funded through the community development funding program. The $115,000 surplus will be used to address potential future costs that are greater than the estimated cost within revision two of the general fund capital program. The last slide includes the details of the recommendations for finance committee for this report. With this, uh, I can take questions now if there are any, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Baker. Uh, again, will you take the deck down for me, please, so I can yep. see some hands if there are any? Thank you, sir. Committee, uh, a lot of numbers there, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Mayor Darling, please. Uh, thanks, Mr. Baker. Um, first of all, very impressive uh, capital program this year. Um, uh, committee chair earlier, thanked other levels of government wouldn't wouldn't be possible without them. Um, so thank you to our provincial and federal partners uh, on these projects. I'm just curious, um, and I think you just you alluded to it there. We know the, the uh, some sectors are still struggling very much with COVID. Other sectors are are flat out. Um, have have you been seeing uh, any concerns with material costs or just availability of contractors? I know you manage that through your tendering process and you have a budget and and so on and so forth. But any uh, any early concerns there, uh, Mr. Baker, with uh, with tenders? Um, we haven't seen any uh, thing on our regular reconstruction jobs yet. Um, I was talking with Samir um, Yamin lately, and he um, on a roofing job, he has seen um, higher than expected costs okay. um, for that. But other than that, that, we haven't seen anything yet. Okay, and then uh, we'll certainly we won't be building any decks uh, these days. But uh, but um, but but it, just uh, I mean I, I'm too granular here. But so if let's say we we're going to do a roofing job and just the numbers were just absolutely great, would would we just uh, circle back and say is this a must do? Can we put it off for a year? Are those are those the types of things we would we would contemplate uh, just uh, if we had to? Yes, uh, we could do that. And the other contemplation that we have is for the COVID-19 resilience um, infrastructure funding program. The deadline is now December um, 31st, 2023. So okay. if we uh, determine that we expect that the prices are going to be high, 
uh, we may wait um, and tender it um, in 2022 right. to try and capitalize on better prices. Yeah, perfect. Okay, no, perfect. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I don't see any. So, uh, will someone move the recommendations both to the? Uh, I'll move it. Thank you, uh, Councillor Reardon, and seconded by Councillor Sullivan. Uh, on the question, then, please. All those in favor? Aye. And opposed. Thank you so much. Unanimous again. Thank you, staff. Uh, another um, another good report. That is the last item for the evening. I, I did want to uh, uh, just a few short remarks before I close the meeting. Was there anyone else that would like to make a few uh, remarks before we close? I know um, the first, or excuse me, the second item was intended to to do that, but is there anything further uh, the committee might would like to say? Anyone? Uh, Councillor Sullivan. Uh, it's already been said, but it needs to be said again, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, you know the focus that we've had as a finance committee these last five years is driven by the guy who, who runs the meeting so um i know you are modest and, and send it other ways and you're probably about to but before you do um just for myself and i'm sure it's shared by the rest of the committee uh the work you've done on behalf of citizens by chairing this committee um has been fantastic and under your leadership we've made finance sexy so uh thank you for that um, as you go off into uh, municipal reti semi-retirement after this election, um, I really think you'll be able to look back at, at the work that the Finance Committee has done and will continue to do um, a, as something that's really important for the city, and it's going to be happening because you led us for the last five years. So thank you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Um, and finance was always sexy. They just didn't know it. Uh, look, uh, last week I was asked to write an op-ed for the uh, for the for the TJ, and I did, and uh, had a few people look at it for me, and I got to 800 words, just shy of 800 words, and it, that couldn't say what I wanted to say. So um, here this evening, it's it's a little tougher, except to say sincerely thank you. Um, a little emotional, sorry. Uh, some like-minded, very intelligent people leading the way, and uh, and. Um, I just don't. I, we've just gotten leaps and bounds in this in this time, and I couldn't thank people enough. So again, I'll uh, I'll finish with that. But a sincere thank you to everyone. Okay. Um, motion to close the meeting, please. Motion to close final meeting of the team. Thank you, Donna. And uh, Councilman Norton, you seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Good evening and good luck, everyone. Thank I, you. I I want to finance a sexy T-shirt, though, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Take it out for the next committee. Okay. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Yeah.